Well, how's it? And good morning, you guys. Welcome to the gathering of the people of God here at New Hope Community Church. We're so blessed that you have joined us uh, this morning. My name is John, and I have the honor of giving you guys the announcements this morning. Uh, first thing is that, hey, we are in the middle of a small group campaign, and it's still not too late for you to join in and do life together. We're doing a sermon-based small group where we hear the Word of God together, and we gather with over good food, good fellowship, and we... Uh, digest and we marinate on the Word of God together and discuss the sermon notes. So you can go to our website, yopecommunity.tv, <coughs> excuse me, uh, slash small groups, and you can sign up to a small group, get plugged into one. Secondly, is that March is a big month for us. So starting March, we are going to have our Nakupuna ministry. It is just a precious time for our um, Kupuna just to gather, have fellowship. Um, they'll be doing uh, ministry together. You can contact uh, Ronnie Correa or you can go to our website, newhopecommunity.tv slash small groups. And there's a uh, tab on there where you can click on Kupuna. And we'd love for all the Kupuna just to gather and have a sense of, of, of value and dignity. Uh, we are so grateful to to have our kupuna gather together and we have some great plans and uh, great activities ahead for you guys for 2024 so make sure to sign up for that all right and then lastly is that we are going to have a men's breakfast free breakfast on march 9th on a saturday at 8 a.m it's going to be at new hope oahu with pastor wayne and so make sure to get involved, okay, and be a part of that. It'll just be a great time to hear from our senior pastor at New Hope Oahu, Pastor Wayne, and hear him, hear him share his heart uh, for all the men, uh, especially in light of COVID, looking forward to 2024, all right? And so with that, we're going to prepare our hearts for our tithes and offering this morning. How many of you guys have done your taxes? Yeah, I just filled my taxes this past uh, week, and it's so amazing uh, that um, the faithfulness of God, and as we filled out our taxes, we we're able to just fill out the part where, you know, you give charitable donations, and it's, um, it's truly humbling to know that uh, we're able to, our family, that we were able to uh, give more than the 10 percent that we're able to give out of the abundance of our heart because god gave us unto us first you know jesus says hey do not lay up for yourselves earthly treasures but where the thieves can break in and steal where moth can um, cause rust and destroy and but he says that we are to um give unto the Lord and to the deposit in heavenly treasure. And Jesus says, hey, uh, where, your, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And it's so um, humbling to know that this past year, our heart is for Jesus. Our heart is for um, the body of Christ, the church. Our heart is to give and to be generous. And is that Jesus says, hey, where your treasure is at, there your heart will be also. And not only have we given to church, but we've also given into Compassion International and to the YMCA and different, and different nonprofits. And so um, what a, a joy to be able to give and to be able to look back and say, Lord, you've been so faithful. Uh, thank you, Lord, that you have freely given into us and that we're somehow able to we give back to you what is yours. Amen. Let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you, Lord, for your word. And we do ask right now, Lord, that you would bless each and every single person. Uh, Father, we are so thankful, oh Lord God, that you are the God who goes first, um, that you first love us so that we're able to love you back. You first uh, saved us, oh Lord God, and you first served us, so now we're able to serve you, and Lord, you first gave unto us, so now we're able to give back unto you. So Lord, I pray God that uh, these funds, Lord, that would be used to support the advancement of your kingdom, bless every giver, Lord, bless those who can't give, Lord, and uh, Lord, I ask, oh Lord God, that your favor, your countenance be with them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 
We're so glad that you have tuned in uh, this morning. And so, can you go ahead and open your Bibles to Acts uh, chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 13. We're continuing our series on the book of Acts called To the Ends of the Earth. And the message today is called The Power of Pentecost. The Power of Pentecost. Now, as you guys can tell from my shirt, I still have my post-Valentine's love shirt and how many of you guys had a great valentine's had a good valentine's all right was able to spend time with your loved ones and your spouse uh, how many ladies got a box of chocolates i know i got one um and it's one of those c's box of chocolates and so uh it's been a minute but i do have a filipino joke for you guys and it's also a valentine's day joke so it's a two for one Valentine's joke and a Filipino joke. Here we go. Uh, what does a box of chocolates and Filipinos have in common? They both kill dogs. <laughs> so I'm sorry. I'm laughing that way too hard. Um, it's a joke. Relax, okay? Um, it's not my purpose, but anyways, uh, would you open your Bibles to Acts chapter 2? Two uh, verses 1 to 13. And as we turn to our Bibles, so Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the Gospels, and then Acts, which is the Acts of the Apostles, or more specifically, it's the Acts of Jesus, what He did and what He taught through the Holy Spirit in the early church, okay? Let me ask you guys a question. How many of you guys are online shoppers? I think a better question is, how addicted are you to online shopping? So if you have an Amazon account, an eBay account, a Sheen, a Walmart, plus you have an Etsy, you have an Instacart, you have maybe a Wish or a Temu account. That's like eight different online shopping. And as you have shopped online, how many of you have ordered something that it seemed really good, like it promises to be this, but it ended up being... Um, under delivered, right? That, that your expectation was here when you saw it on your phone, when you saw it on your tablet, but when it arrived, it actually was down here, the reality. Uh, in fact, maybe you did some due diligence. You looked at reviews, you looked at how many stars, but what was promised was definitely under delivered. You know, there's actually memes about this, uh, about Wish. Wish.com, it's uh, what I ordered versus what I got. Here's a couple of uh, memes for you guys. If you're looking for a mask for Halloween, do not buy it from Wish.com. That is the Jason, I believe, and that's what they ordered, and this is how it came in. Secondly, this chair, it seemed really good. Wow, it was like $2, but when they actually received it, it was a miniature chair. Okay, uh, here's one actually from Amazon where it's a animal pillowcase. It's a dinosaur kids pillowcase and it looks like the pillowcase is a dinosaur, right? But in actuality, when it arrived, it's a, a picture of the kids sleeping on the dinosaur pillowcase. Here's another one. It's an area rug for homes and it looked big in the pictures, but when it actually arrived, it looks more like a mat. And last but not least, this is a crochet blanket you ordered from Wish or Temu. And the blanket, when it came, it just came like a bundle of strings. So these are typical cases of over-promising yet under-delivering. You promise one thing, great quality, but in actuality when you received it, it was pretty much underwhelming. Well, in Acts chapter 1... The resurrected Jesus, after spending 40 days on earth, 
to minister to his people. And before he was ascended up to heaven, he told his disciples, stay here in Jerusalem. I promise you, there's a Holy Spirit of promise and you're going to be, receive power in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. And you shall be my witness in J Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So Jesus promises them. And remember they waited from last week. They waited 10 days before the, the fulfillment of the promise came. And here's a spoiler alert, you guys, is that Jesus promised and the Holy Spirit over delivered because the Holy Spirit, he came not only in power, but he, he empowered the people of God to be witnesses. And the course of human history has never been, been the same. And the world has been forever changed because of the, the fulfillment of the promise of the Holy Spirit, that there was power in Pentecost. So let's turn to our text in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. I'll be reading from the ESV version. When the day of Pentecost had arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Verse 5, now they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? How is, how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and uh, proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mocking said, They are filled with new wine. This is the word of the Lord. Let's pray. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord, that all the promises of God are yes and amen. We thank you, Lord, that you have a perfect track record of faithfulness. That every stage, Lord, you're the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. You are true to your word. You cannot, you are not like man, Lord, that you cannot tell a lie, Lord, that you keep your promises, that your mercies are are in you and that your love endures forever so lord i pray that we would pursue your presence that we would seek to be empowered by your holy spirit lord you are the same yesterday today and forever and the same power that was poured <coughs> the same holy spirit that filled your people in the day of pentecost lord it's available for us now so, Lord, I pray that, Lord, that we would um, pursue your presence, that we will um, not live according to our own strength, as your word says, Lord, not by might nor by power, but by your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So the second chapter of Acts, it introduces three important uh, keys to the entire book. So in Acts chapter 2, there's three important events that really affects all of the rest of the 28 chapters of Acts. The fullness of the Holy Spirit, verses 1 to 13. The evangelistic ministry of the churches, which is in verses 14 to 41. And the community life of the believers from verses 42 to 47. And the fulfillment of the promise of God here, of the Holy Spirit, it takes place during the Jewish fe uh, festival of Pentecost. 
pente, meaning five, right? Um, so this is 50, okay? And this is the, the one of the three major holidays. This is the, the festival of wheat, of the wheat harvest. And it's 50 days after the Passover. And this is very crucial because God, <laughs> who is outside time and space, He knew that and He coordinated and He arranged that people would gather from all nations in Jerusalem during the day <coughs> of Pentecost. And so here's the big idea and here's the main point from Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 13 regarding the power of Pentecost. Would you write this down in your notes? The power of Pentecost is that the Spirit of God came down to bring intimacy, to bring unity, and power to His people. The power that happened during the day of Pentecost, which is available to you and to me right here, right now. What is today? February 2024. Is that... During Pentecost, intimacy with God, unity amongst the people of God, and power to the people of God, they're available to you and to me, as we can see here in Acts chapter 2. When the Holy Spirit was poured out in the form of a rushing wind and tongues of fire, He filled the 120 disciples in the upper room and they, he, the Holy Spirit filled uh, His people with power and they were able to speak in tongues and three distinct things happened. Unity, intimacy, and power. So let's go to the first point is that number one is we can have personal and intimate relationship with God because of Pentecost. You and I were able to access a personal and intimate, a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God Himself through the Spirit of God indwelling us because of what happened at Pentecost. And that is one of the powers of Pentecost, that we have intimate relationship, a personal relationship with God in Acts chapter 1, verse 1, when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues of fire appeared to them and rested on each of them, and they were all filled of the Holy Spirit. So the wind and the fire that accompany the gifts of the Spirit are biblical uh, symbols for the working or the activity of the Holy Spirit. So the Greek and Hebrew words for wind or uh, breath are referred to as a spirit. So in, in, the, in Greek, it is pneuma. In Hebrew, it's ruach, which is wind or spirit or breath. And this is important because God manifested His presence. He didn't come through His Son. He didn't take on skin and bones and flesh till the New Testament. But in the Old Testament, the presence of God was manifested through wind and through fire. Okay, in Exodus chapter 19, verse 16, it says, On the morning of the third day, there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud and a very loud sound. A loud trumpet blast so all the people in the camp as they were going through the exodus they were afraid because God came like a rushing wind and a loud sound first Kings 19 11 the Lord said go and stand in the mountain in the presence of the Lord for the Lord is about to pass by then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before them Ezekiel 1 4 God appears to them in the flashing lightning and what looked like fire. So the Old Testament, God made His presence known through rushing wind. It's the same thing in, not only through rushing wind, but also in the form of a fire. Remember, how did God reveal Himself to Moses? Through a 
burning bush, which is one singular fire. Later on, uh, God's glory, when he would lead the people of Israel uh, through the night, how did God manifest his presence and lead his people collectively Israel from Exodus through a what a pillar of fire and what's interesting here is that Luke he makes a very important point that instead of one fire it says uh, the rushing wind came right there was like a mighty rushing wind like whoo, they couldn't hear it it was so loud and then there was individual fires on each person's head 120 people individual fires on top of their head tires or fires rather that look like in the form of a tongue and what's the significance of that the significance of that is that god's personal temple his presence is not confined to a temple but God's presence and God's temple is in each and every individual single believer in Christ the residence of God the new temple of Jesus body is his people that they have become like little mobile temples where the Spirit of God dwells so the Spirit was there each fire appeared on top of the 120 in the upper room uh, meaning that they all had an end of that God personally dwelt intimately with each and every single person and so because of that because we have intimacy with God what is the action point would you write this into your action point sing with joy and worship and experience intimacy with God because the Holy Spirit, the advent or the arrival of the Holy Spirit at the day of Pentecost. We now have power individually dwelling in each person. We become the, the temple of God, right? First Corinthians says your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. The presence of God dwells in each one of us. Because of that, we should be experience intimacy with God and we should sing with joy in worship, you guys. Pentecost, it has opened the door for us to have an intimate and a supernatural relationship and experience with God. I think too many times in evangelical Christianity, uh, we emphasize, uh, you know, like the intellectual ascent or the volitional ascent that, yes, I confess with my mouth, Jesus is Christ and, and all right, now I have the Bible and trust me, we're a Bible preaching church. You know, we go verse by verse. We're going to spend the next year, maybe the next year and a half on the book of Acts. All right. We believe the Bible is the true word of God. But what Pentecost brought about was that there is indeed an important ingredient in being a follower of Jesus. Pentecost, it reminds that there is there is something more. All throughout the book of Acts, there are God-fearers, that people who feared God. And it wasn't until they were baptized or filled with the Holy Spirit that they experienced joy, that they were able to uh, speak in tongues. And so the, the day of Pentecost, it really brought about a deeper sense that the Holy Spirit dwells with inside of me, that the fire of God, His presence, it's over me as he's within me and I now I can sing in worship to God you know Ephesians uh, chapter or Romans chapter 5 says that he has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit poured out his love for us our hearts are filled with joy and joy it expresses itself in singing and in worship, in Acts verses, uh, verse 11, chapter 2, verse 11, it says, And they began declaring the wonders of God. And that's what we're doing when we're worshiping. We declare the wonders of God. Our hearts are filled with overjoy. Right? And we just celebrated Valentine's Day. And man, there's nothing like 
you're so in love that you just want to sing a song. Um, when Renee and I uh, got married um, during our ceremony, she actually composed a song and she wrote a song and she sang it uh, because of love. You know, I have a, a mixtape. I don't know if you guys remember those. Or you, either a literal tape or a CD. You burn a CD of love songs that I have. And, and this is the heart of the believer because God has been poured out and we have personal relationship with Him. We have no choice but to sing a song. Singing is one of the most supreme expressions of our joy and intimacy with God. You know, just as human love, it expresses the express human song, human love through songs. The Christian song expresses the joy of the relationship that we have with God. Uh, John Wesley, the pastor, says, Singing is as much the language of holy joy as praying is holy desire. And Paul, he connects singing directly with being full of the Spirit of God. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 to 20, it says, Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms and hymns and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what does it mean for Paul in Ephesians 5 to be filled with the Holy Spirit? It says, we sing songs. We greet each other with songs and psalms and, and hymns. So speaking and singing there and making melody are participles. In other words, it answers how we are to be filled with the Holy Spirit. How are you filled with the Holy Spirit? You make melody, you sing, and you speak psalms. So fellow brother and sister in Christ, Christians, we must constantly seek to recapture what Pentecost signified. What does it signify? Vibrant intimacy with God and joyous worship that ensues from that relationship. Let me ask you guys a question. What is the most repeated command in the Bible? It is do not fear, right? Or do not be afraid this idea of, pe of, of, of peace or to be still. Uh, it's been said that the word do not fear or the command, it, appear, it appears over 365 times in the whole Bible, which means every day we need to be reminded we're not to be afraid. But here's, the, here's my point. What is the second most repeated command in the Bible? You know what it is? It's to praise God and to worship God. So variations or phrases like praise the Lord or rejoice or rejoice in the Lord or magnify the Lord or give thanks to the Lord or to praise God or to bless the Lord. These variations, the second most repeated command in the Bible is to praise and to worship and to sing and to declare the goodness of God. You know, one of the coolest things that I witness when people first come to know Christ, uh, we just had a brother who has been coming to church and uh, he wants to get baptized. And he says, man, it's so cool to go to church. I don't know the songs, but the lyrics are up there and I don't know how to sing to save my life. Uh, you know, I just make a joyful noise to the Lord, but I just sing my heart out to Jesus. And it's, it's such a joy to able to respond and to express your love for God, this intimate relationship with Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit that began or that was the, the arrival of the Holy Spirit in the day of Pentecost. Remember you guys, God is the great initiator, right? He first loved us. That's why we were able to love Him. He first uh, served us. That's why we're able to serve Him. And He first gave unto us. That's why we're able to give unto Him. 
But do you also know that God sang first over us? You don't believe me? Look at Zephaniah. Zephaniah chapter 3. It says, On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion. Let not your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst. A mighty one who will save. That's where we get the word, the song, Mighty to Save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. Did you catch that? That when God saves you, He rejoices over you with a loud shout. And He sings and He dances over you. The word rejoice over you, it literally means to dance or to skip or to leap or to spin around in joy. So if you could imagine in your mind the creator of the universe upon saving you he dances he rejoices he leaps for joy that god he dances with joy over us how much more should we dance with joy since he is in our midst the uh, the hebrew word there for dance it means to spin around and that God rejoices over you. How much more should we rejoice over Him? That we have a personal relationship with the Creator of the universe, the Creator of the heavens of the earth, our Redeemer, our Savior, our great physician, our healer. Our very life is in God. And He, how can we not worship Him? How could we just sit through a service and not lift up our hands in worship? How could we not? If we clap when the Super Bowl, if there's a good call or work for our team wins, how could we not clap in victory over what Jesus has done? And uh, Charles Spurgeon says this, If God sings, shall we not sing? He did not sing when he made the world. No, he looked upon it and simply said that it was good. Talking about creation, God said it was good. The angels sang. The sons of God shouted for joy. Creation was very wonderful to them, but it was not much to God who could have made a thousand worlds by his mere will. Creation could not make God sing. When all was done, and the Lord saw what became of the salvation of His redeemed when He saved you and me. Then He rejoiced in a divine manner. Oh church, how can we be lukewarm when God saves us? When God rejoices over us? When God dances with joy over the fact that He saves us? And so I have two more points, but I, I, I just want to dwell in this. Is when it's time to worship, let's worship. Let's throw our hearts over the line. We, could, we should be like David, a man after God's own heart, who said his wife was, you know, making fun of him. And he's like, you're a king. Well, how could you be dancing around God? For God like that, you should be more dignified. And David says, I will be more undignified than this. That we are able to express through songs, through lifting of hands, through clapping of hands, through worship, through our worship songs, what God has done in us. The God, the very fact that we now have a personal relationship with Jesus through the power of the Spirit, through the advent of the Holy Spirit, the mighty rushing wind, the, the fire that came over each believer is now available to you and to me. And how can we not sing? How can we not rejoice over the God of our salvation? Amen. Let's go ahead and pray. And so, Lord, we just thank you for this morning. We thank you, Lord God, that we can somehow, Lord, uh, through praise and worship, honor you. 
We thank you, Lord, that through the power of your of Pentecost, when you came down, Holy Spirit, that we have a personal, we have a one-on-one -on -one intimate relationship with you. So, Lord, I pray right now that you would stir our affection, that we would love you all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, that we will not be lukewarm, that we will, how could we be in the presence of God and not be moved? How can we be unaffected and not be changed and not be touched with our emotions and not touched with our soul and our being, knowing the price that you paid to redeem us? And so, Lord, I pray, God, for your people right now that we would have that intimate relationship with you, knowing that we are yours and you are mine. You are ours, oh Lord God. And so, Lord, I pray for a desire that you would uh, put a new spirit over us. You'll take out a heart of stone, Lord, and you'll give us a heart of flesh that we would love you, heart, soul, mind, and strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, don't forget that uh, we still have small groups. Until then, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord give you His peace. Go with God and God will go with you. Love you guys.